Telakash was a great man. And everyone in the world recognizes that. We have said of Fidel Castro, and it's true. President Cycle Touré says that at any given moment, the best traditions of any people may uh, be represented by all of them, a majority of them, a minority of them, or one of them. And if Fidel Castro is the only human being that represents humanity at its best, humanity will never be diminished one iota. Fidel Castro is a man. A man of great stature and great comprehension. A little island like Cuba. He is himself leaped beyond this island of Cuba. He is known everywhere throughout the world. And he is respected everywhere throughout the world except by capitalist pigs. Everywhere. America has no right to talk to Cuba. Cuba can teach America so many things. America says that it is one of the richest countries in the world and even demeans Cuba because it is one of the poorest. Yet the conditions of health of a child in Cuba is better than the conditions of health of any child in America. From the child, that child is born until it dies, it will have a doctor in its community that will monitor every movement it makes free of charge. Because Fidel Castro understands that the most important thing in a society is the quantity and quality of the people and their rising level of consciousness that they have first of all a responsibility to other Cubans before they have a responsibility to themselves. America is the exact opposite. Doctors to Africa than America and all of Western Europe together have sent. We're not even talking about freedom fighters. When I first went to Africa in the 1960s, I was shocked. Among all the liberation movements, PAIGC and Guinea Bissau, Frelimo, MPLA, among all of them, I found Cuban combatants there teaching them, even sometimes fighting and dying with them. Fidel Castro, we have to respect him. We are Pan Africanists, and Fidel Castro is a Pan Africanist of the highest order. When Angola was bleeding and the racist pigs in uh, South Africa invaded Angola, Fidel Castro sent the sons and daughters of Africa, sent those Cubans there whose bloodstream has Africa tied to it, to go and defend Africa. To go and defend Africa's dignity. Fidel Castro, that's why the African community here, we instinctively love him. When Fidel Castro came to America at the United Nations, he came to live at the Theresa Hotel in Harlem. No other president has ever done that. That's the honor he paid to us. And he paid us that honor because we instinctively supported him. We always instinctively support justice. And we know that Fidel Castro is undergoing a just struggle. A struggle for independence. A struggle to be not under the hegemony of American imperialism like all the other puppets in the Caribbean. When America says jump, they say how high. Fidel Castro is concerned of one thing. Making sure that the national resources of his country serve the priority of the well-being of his people go to these other countries. They sell whatever they have. As a matter of fact, their leaders are sorry. Slavery is over. Tourism is properly controlled by the Cuban uh, Communist Party. Properly controlled. I mean, they're making experiments with it, but they themselves are in the position of controlling and has within a limited aspect because at this point it's only experiment. Of course, uh, U.S. capitalism is hoping that through this this will happen, but it's just a fight always. And you go into a ring, you fight. You're convinced you will win. The enemy is convinced they will win. We will see. But uh, I think the uh, attack here, the political attack, is what I want to speak of. Under this political attack, it appears that because the people in Cuba are poor and they have nothing to eat, that they'll be disgruntled. Vietnam defeated America. Defeated America. And I was in North Vietnam. I had one of the greatest honors of my life. I had lunch with Ho Chi Minh in North Vietnam when American planes were bombing North Vietnam. One of the greatest honors of my life. And the Vietnamese who fought America, they fought America, and every Vietnamese soldier had not one bowl of rice a day. That was their ration. <laughs> and they whooped America. <laughs> what does not having food have to do with a fight when you're down? Matter of fact, the poorer you are, the more determined you are in the struggle. So if America keeps thinking that because now the Cubans will only have one bowl of rice, the Vietnamese defeated them on one bowl of rice. The Cubans defeated them on half a bowl. <laughs> 